This is amazing news. After an extended period that led me to almost believe SpaceX had outright decided to only build expendable centers for Falcon Heavy, there's a refreshing update. Specifically, the Vice President of Falcon Launch Vehicles at SpaceX recently revealed that there's at least one mission scheduled for next year where they plan to successfully recover the core stage. Why is this still the biggest challenge for SpaceX? Will Falcon Heavy make a breakthrough? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The year of 2024 is poised to be an exhilarating chapter in SpaceX's journey. Beyond the audacious plans unveiled for Starship and Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy is set to carve its path, ensuring it remains a vital player in the unfolding narrative of space exploration. In a tweet on X, John Edwards said, Next few heavy missions will require we expend the center core, but should have at least one mission next year where we we recover it. To be fair, while SpaceX has achieved remarkable success in developing reusable rocket components, such as the Falcon 9 first stage, recovering an entire Falcon Heavy launch sensor presents a unique set of challenges. The Falcon 9's success in landing and being refurbished for subsequent launches has significantly reduced the cost of accessing space. However, extending this reusability to launch centers requires overcoming additional engineering complexities and logistical hurdles, as well as as ensuring the safety and reliability of recovered infrastructure. There are two difficult situations for it. First, the payloads are too heavy. This means more power is required. Payloads which are going to high energy orbits mean that there's a need for speed. In fact, almost all of the payload that the Falcon is taking is sent to geosynchronous orbit. To do that, they need to get as much velocity as possible out of both the first and second stages, and that means the center core is moving about twice as fast as a normal Falcon 9 booster would at stage separation. The center core was quite literally halfway to orbit, traveling at about 14,000 kilometers per hour, with orbital velocity being about 27 to 28,000, if I recall correctly, by the time its engines were cut off. Trying to decelerate that in time to avoid a harsh concrete like reception by the atmosphere is, uh, hmm, not easy. And that's hard to recover from. The faster it's going, the harder it is to slow down for a landing. More fuel needs to be saved for a re-entry burn because otherwise you're dealing with a lot more heating and your booster is getting cooked. And more fuel saved for landing means less fuel available to accelerate the payload. In the past, SpaceX has attempted to land all three of the rocket's boosters back on landing pads on land and at sea so that they can be refurbished and reused on future missions. It does this to cut down on mission costs. The company has yet to succeed at retrieving all three, although it's come dramatically close. The two side boosters made a pinpoint synchronized landing on ground pads after an April 2019 mission, and the rocket's sensor booster touched down on a seafaring platform, but then rough waves at sea toppled it over. While recovering the Falcon Heavy core stage presents formidable challenges, it represents a crucial step in SpaceX's broader mission to make space exploration more accessible and cost effective. As SpaceX continues to push the boundaries of rocket technology, the prospect of a Falcon Heavy breakthrough in core stage recovery holds immense significance for the future of space exploration. Well, whether SpaceX's gamble comes through or not, next month we'll see another impressive demonstration of this heavy lift monstrosity. In a surprising move, officials just announced the U.S. military's reusable X-37 space plane will launch on the next flight of SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket, scheduled for December 7th. This marks the first time that the X-37 B will launch on a Falcon Heavy, according to a Space Force statement. Little is known about the capabilities and operations of the space plane, but the Space Force says the mission will follow previous flights that used the X-37B as a testbed for launching experimental payloads and returning them to Earth. We are excited to expand the envelope of the reusable X-37B's capabilities using the Flight Proven Service Module and Falcon Heavy rocket to fly multiple cutting-edge experiments for the Department of the Air Force and its partners, said Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Fritschen, program director for the X-37B in the statement. The X-37B flew into orbit for the first time in 2010. Its most recent flight ended a year ago this week, with a return to NASA's old space shuttle landing strip in Florida, wrapping up nearly 30 months in orbit, the longest of its flight to date. All of those missions flew a few hundred miles above Earth in mid-inclination orbits following paths that took the vehicles between about 55 degrees north and south latitude on each lap around the planet. It isn't known exactly 
exactly why the X-37B is launching atop a Falcon Heavy for the USS F-52 mission. However, the military's talk of expanding the envelope and operating in new orbital regimes seems to suggest the next X-37B mission will fly in a higher orbit than its predecessors. That makes sense with the space plane launching on top of a Falcon Heavy rocket with significantly more lift capability than the Falcon 9 or Atlas V used to launch the previous X-37B missions. The space plane weighs about 11,000 pounds or around 5,000 kilograms, not including the additional weight of its service module. A military solicitation document released when the Air Force procured the rocket for the USS F-52 mission, which we now know will launch the X-37B, said this mission would require a lift capacity of around 14,000 pounds or 6,350 kilograms into a geostationary transfer orbit, a highly elliptical loop around Earth ranging some 35,000 kilometers from the planet. That would be a big change for the past missions of the military's mini space shuttle. But this document is now more than five years old, and the circumstances of the mission may have changed. The military typically doesn't publish the orbital parameters of its space missions, but watchful amateur sleuths can estimate altitude and inclination with publicly available information, like airspace and maritime warning notices, associated with a rocket launch. Those are usually released closer to the launch date. In June, the former Vice Chief of Space Operations General David Thompson said the X-37B space plane has been a remarkable testbed and experimentation vehicle. He also hinted at new things for the winged vehicle. We have grown its mission set in terms of the types of technologies that we're testing, some associated experiments with operational concepts, Thompson said in a forum hosted by the Mitchell Institute for Aerospace Studies. It has proven itself to be a remarkably flexible and versatile platform, and I would tell you you're only beginning to see some of the exciting things that we have planned for the X-37. Besides that, it's crucial, given the current trend in the development of space military activities as major powers, particularly China, rapidly deploy new space capabilities. Choosing to entrust military missions to a reliable, cost-effective rocket with a large payload capacity for orbit is exceptionally important. Falcon Heavy is a uniquely designed rocket comprising three coordinated boosters working together to lift an impressive 64 tons into orbit. Its engines generate as much power as 18 747 aircraft, showcasing its incredible strength. Two side boosters are designed to land back on the ground after launch and will be refurbished for reuse. This significantly reduces launch costs as the rocket doesn't have to be discarded after a single use. Moreover, the rocket's design allows for more benefits in mission timing and orbital trajectories, enhancing mission efficiency and accuracy. In some cases, the two side boosters may not return due to specific requirements from the customer. This flexibility is a standout feature of the Falcon Heavy that no other rocket can match. Around the beginning of the year, the U.S. Air Force awarded SpaceX a $160 million contract to launch a top-secret military satellite. This was the first time a military launch contract had been awarded to a private space exploration company, and it is thought to be a sign that the military is beginning to embrace the capabilities of reusable rockets. In early November, SpaceX once again secured 10 contracts worth $1.23 billion in the National Security Space Launch Program. Seven out of the 10 missions will be launched on Falcon 9, and three missions will be carried out using the Falcon Heavy. SpaceX won 22 contracts, accounting for 46% of the awards, awards, while the ULA won 26 contracts, representing 54% of the launch contracts. However, the ULA's Vulcan has not yet been launched, and the potential for conversion to SpaceX is quite high. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you'd like to support our channel even further, you can go ahead and hop on over to our Patreon through that link in the description below. When you sign up to be a Patri patron today, you'll gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.